In this video, we're going over tips and tricks and hidden features of the Samsung Galaxy AO3S. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, I'm going to be going over some really cool tips and tricks and hidden features on the new Samsung Galaxy AO3S. Now, before getting into those tips and tricks, I do want to make a quick note that if you purchase this phone, you might have noticed that it does not come with the wall charger in the box. It only comes with the USB cable. It is a type C to type C charger. So I want to recommend that you pick up one of these USB C wall chargers in case you haven't already gotten one. Now I have two cool recommendations. One is going to be this little small one here from Anchor. It's only $17.99 and it does support fast charging. The other option is also from Anchor and it has two ports, one that will connect with the charger that came in the box, a type C connector, and also a standard USB connector for you to use to charge your other devices. For example, if you have a Bluetooth speaker, Bluetooth headphones, you can also use um, the other charger on the larger one to charge all in the same plug. So if you haven't already got one, make sure you pick up one of those. Now, before I get started, I do wanna give a quick shout out to another video that I just posted, which is some really cool setup tips and tricks and just some basic things you'll wanna do when you first buy the phone. So check out this video right here. You're gonna learn some really cool things that you should do first, little tweaks before going over these tips and tricks. Without further ado, let's jump right in and let's learn some really cool tips and tricks and hidden features on the Samsung Galaxy AO3S. The first tip I wanna show you is how to run two apps at one time. So what you'll need to do is first decide what two apps do you want to run. In this case, I want to run YouTube and I also want to run Google Chrome. I want to be on a website searching while I'm watching a YouTube video. So I'm going to go to the YouTube app, tap on YouTube and find a video to play. And I already have a video queued up here. So um, leave this here. Now I'm going to tap the home button and then I'm going to find the second app that I'd like to open, which is Google Chrome. Oh, which is right here. Open it first, go home. And now I want to tap the recent apps button right here. Swipe over and right above YouTube, you'll see the YouTube icon. Tap on the icon and hit open in split screen view. And then I'm going to select Chrome at the bottom here so I can have Chrome at the bottom and YouTube at the top. Now guess what? You don't have to do Chrome. You could have your text messages open at the bottom. You can also swipe through here and select a different app to have open while YouTube is playing. And one important thing to know, any app that you see as you swipe down is going to be compatible with the split screen view. Um, there are some apps that do not support this function, one big app being Instagram. So just an FYI, um, most apps work, but not all apps work. Okay, so I'm gonna tap Google Chrome, and now that I have both apps open, I'm going to play my video and tap on this little button in the right corner here to make sure the video is in full screen mode. And while my video plays, I can scroll through the Disney website and see what new deals they have and what prices, all while listening and watching my video. I can also take my phone and tilt it and it will rotate sideways so that I can continue to watch the video in the portrait mode while I scroll through the website here. Now, if you tap in the center where you see these three dots, I can tap this button here and I can switch it and have the video move to the right and the website move to the left. I can also take my finger and put it on the three dots and drag the screen to the left to get out of the split screen and back into the full screen mode. And that's it. That's how you run two apps at one time. Now you'll notice when you're in full screen mode with your video, you won't see your home, back or recent apps button. No problem, you just need to swipe up and then tap your home button to get back to the home screen. And oh, look at that, another little hidden tip. So while the video is playing, if you tap the home button, it will shrink the video into what is called a pop-out video that I can then move to 
two different sections of the foam. I can put it in any one of the four corners or in the center, and I can continue to use the foam to do other things. So very cool way to work the multitasking element. Now, let me show you a little bit more on how that works really quickly. So if you have YouTube open and the video is playing, you can hit the home button and that will put it in this little pop out video. However, if the video is paused and you tap the home button, guess what? It's going to go away. So that's just the difference in how that works. Okay, moving on. Next, I want to show you how to watch TV for free on your phone. Whoa, that's crazy. That's right. Samsung has a really cool TV service that they offer with the phone where you can watch uh, a list of channels for free. Now, to do this, we do have to do a few setting tweaks. So the first thing you want to do is hold down the home screen. Oh, make sure you're not touching anything specific, but hold down the home screen, swipe to the right, and you'll want to switch this from Google Discover to Samsung Free, and that's their TV service. Next, we're going to hit the home button. And now when you now when you swipe right on the home screen, it will take you right to their Samsung TV Plus. And they have a few disclaimers here. The only one you actually have to select is the first option. So just select that, hit agree. And now you can begin to watch TV for free on your phone. There are ads, but hey, free is free. You can tap on new channels, featured, or you can just swipe through to look at different um, themes. So sports, kids, comedy. One of my favorite channels I watch all the time is the Wild and Out channel. You can go through here and you can literally watch Wild and Out 24 hours a day, which is awesome. One of my favorite shows. Um, I'm not sure where that channel is, but I know it's in here for sure. So just swipe through. And as you go to different categories, you can see what channels they offer for free. Boom. Free TV. Aren't you glad you picked a Samsung phone? I sure am happy I have one. All right, moving on. Our next hidden feature is going to be how to launch your camera from any screen, no matter what's going on. Let's say your phone is off and something exciting is happening and you want to snap a picture of it or start recording a video. All you're going to do is tap the power button twice. It'll automatically wake up your phone and take you right to the camera. Even if you have a password, it'll bypass it and take you right to the camera, just like that. Now, this will also work if your phone is unlocked and maybe you're in a different app doing something else. Let's say, for example, you are um, in Google Chrome searching a website. Doesn't matter. Whatever you're doing, hit the power button two times. It'll automatically take you out of that app and right into the camera so you can begin recording your pictures or your videos. Isn't that awesome? That is called the quick launch camera. Now, let's say you say to yourself, hey, that's a cool feature, but you know what? I don't take a lot of pictures. I don't really care for that. I sure wish I could change that double tap function to launch something else. Well, guess what? You can. By swiping down from the top of the screen, and swiping down a second time, you can tap on the power button at the top of the screen. That'll take you to this setting. And in this settings menu, tap on side key settings. And here I can change the double press option from launching the camera to opening a specific app. Maybe you say, I'd much rather be able to launch my flashlight by hitting that double tap. Well, guess what? You can tap on the flashlight, hit the home button, and now you get home and there's no lights on in the house, simply double tap your power button. And guess what? Your flashlight is gonna now come on and help light up your house. That is pretty cool. All right, moving on to our next tip. I wanna show you the Samsung Kids Mode. That's right. Many of you probably didn't even know 
this phone has a kids mode feature. It just happens to be buried in the settings and you just need to know where to look to find it and activate it. Well, let's talk about it. So swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, swipe to your left, and you'll wanna tap on this little plus, and then swipe to your left. Well, before we do that, I just wanna show you some of the other things that are here. So you have an NFT switch, live transcribe, bedtime mode, focus mode, which is great for when you're trying to get work done and you don't want your phone to have be going off with a bunch of notifications, that's focus mode. Secure mode, where you can hide things away on your phone where people have to use a password to get into. And swipe left, kids mode. So tap on, well actually we're gonna hold down on kids and drag it down here. So now it's gonna be a quick shortcut. Every time you swipe down from the top of the screen, you're gonna have this kids mode shortcut. Tap on kids. And this will take you right to the kids mode section. And here you can download these different apps that are um, kid friendly applications that will allow your kids to use your phone and be busy without messing up or seeing any of your personal items on the phone. So um, you'll wanna go in and just tap the little download arrow next to each app and then you can pass your phone to your kids. They can use the camera to take pictures or videos and enjoy all these other fun, kid-friendly, safe apps. And guess what? They can't get out of this section unless they have your unlock pin. So they will be locked in this section. And if they try to get out, they're gonna be prompted to enter a pin, okay? So let's enter our pin and voila, we're out of kids mode. So how do we get back there again? Swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down and swipe to your left and there is the kids mode shortcut. Now you can give your phone to your kids without any fear that they're going to call someone or text someone or see something they're not supposed to see. All right, moving on to our next tip. We're gonna show you how to enable the one-handed mode so you can use the phone easily with one hand. What you're going to do, swipe down from the top of the screen in the upper right corner, tap on the settings wheel, and we're gonna swipe up to advanced features. From here, we're then gonna go down to one-handed mode and we're just going to turn it on and then tap and switch it from gesture to button. And now you can launch the one-handed mode very easily by simply hitting the home button two times, just like this. This will shrink the screen down and make it so you can easily reach the top of the screen with one finger or one hand versus having to reach all the way up to the top of the phone. Again, two taps on the home button and that's what launches the one-handed mode. You can hit the arrow here to switch the side in case you're left-handed and tap in this gray area on the outside to get out of one-handed mode. And that's it. Making the phone easy for anyone to use. Now, moving on to our next tip, I wanna show you a cool little tweak to making the settings that's gonna make it a bit easier to see when you have text messages come through or other notifications. This is called floating notifications. What we're gonna do is swipe down from the top of the screen, so, uh, excuse me, tap the settings wheel, go back to advanced features and swipe up and tap at the bottom on floating notifications and switch it from off to smart pop-up and then under included apps, tap here. And I would say definitely do it for text messages and maybe another app that you use pretty frequently. Um, for now, I think messages is the main app I would like to use for this function. We're gonna then tap the home button and I have this set up on another phone so you can see. 
This is a phone that just received a message, a text message, and it's gonna show up in a little pop-up that looks just like this. So I can just tap on it, and then I can easily see the message right here. I can even tap in the box and I can respond to the message if I would like. Maybe you just wanna see it and say, oh, I'll respond later, hit the home button, and the message goes away, but it stays on the screen as a pop-up, which is what I like, because it will remind me later to respond to that message. So that is the floating notifications tweak that just makes it easier to see your messages as they come through and remember to respond to them later. Now, we're gonna go back again to our settings to enable another feature that just makes it easier to wake up your phone when it is on a table. We wanna come down to advanced features and from here, we want to swipe up. We wanna tap on motions and gestures and enable double tap to turn on screen. Now, tap the home button. We're gonna turn off the screen. And let's say your phone is sitting on a table and you wanna go up to it and simply check the time you're gonna just tap the screen two times and that will automatically wake up the screen so you can check the phone and then allow you to also swipe to unlock the phone. Now, super cool feature, super quick. We're gonna go back to that same menu again and also enable keep screen on while viewing. And this is a really cool feature that will basically use the front sensor to see if you're still reading something on the screen and it will keep the screen on longer than the normal time as long as it can still recognize your face. This is a great feature, again, if you like to read on your phone and you don't wanna to have to touch the screen every two minutes to keep it on, this will keep it on as long as it can detect your face in the front camera. And that is keep screen on while viewing. All right, moving on to one of um, our favorite topics that a lot of people always ask for, how to hide apps. That's right, maybe you have an app that you don't want people to have access to. Let me show you how to hide it when you're not using it so no one can get to it. So, we're going to hold down the home screen, go to widgets, excuse me, not widgets, we're gonna go to settings, and we're gonna to go to hide apps. Now, let's go through our list here and let's find an app that we would like to hide. Maybe you say, I really wanna hide mm, the YouTube app. I don't know why. I'm just picking that one as a random example. So I'm just gonna check the box next to YouTube and it's gonna now go into the hidden app section. I'm gonna hit done. Hit the home button. And now, as I swipe up, you'll notice the YouTube app is completely gone. It's not in the Google folder, it's nowhere. It's totally gone. Now, if you wanna get it back, no problem. Just simply hold down the home screen, go back to settings, tap hide apps. There's gonna be a little minus in the upper left corner of the YouTube app. I'm just gonna tap that. That will take it out of the hidden section. We're gonna hit done the home button and as we swipe up and to our left YouTube is back so that is a super easy way to hide apps on your phone and guess what no one will even know they're there they would have to know to go all the way to hide apps to unhide them boom for our next tip we're going to show you how to customize your phone using the Samsung theme store that's right, you have a theme store that is built into your phone, and let me show you how to get to it. Hold down your home screen, and at the bottom here, the second option is themes. Tap on themes, and here you'll have three different categories, themes, wallpapers, and icons. So the difference between a theme and a wallpaper is that a wallpaper is just uh, downloading a picture that will go on the background of your phone. 
And the icons, well, those are the different icons like your phone app, your email app, your text messaging app. You can download these different theme packs that will change what the icons look like. Just like that. Now this one is cool because it's like a uh, Apple themed um, pack of wallpaper, so that's kind of cool. But for a theme, themes change everything in one swoop. Let's say you liked, um, let's try this theme here. We'll go to Indie Designers and we'll go to this theme right here. So this is gonna change everything from the background of your phone, the icons, the uh, calling app, the text messaging app, it's gonna change everything. Now, I, I encourage you to look through all the pictures first and make sure you like it before you spend your money. You can also tap the download trial button and you can download that theme for 10 minutes to try it out and see if you like it. Let's tap and look at some of the pictures. So this is what your home screen will look like. Your lock screen, the dialer, text messages, your notification panel, it literally changes everything. Everything is gonna look different. So just remember themes change everything. Wallpaper is just the background of the phone. Icons are just the icons. One cool tip within this section, always try to see what's free first before you pay for one. That's just my opinion. So to get to the free themes first, switch from featured to top, tap on the arrow, go down to free, and then it will give you a list of all the free themes that you can try out first. So I always say go through and try the free ones first. You may not need to pay for one if you find a cool free one you like, okay? And that is the Samsung theme store, which will change the total look of your phone. Now, next I wanna show you how to launch your Google Assistant. Now the Assistant is, uh, it lives in the home button. So all you need to do is simply hold down on the home button for two seconds. It will launch your Google Assistant and then you can ask it to do anything. So um, this is what it looks like. There you go. And as you begin to talk, it will listen and try to identify what you're asking. So the top three things I normally will ask the Google Assistant is, hey, set my alarm for 8 a.m. Um, what's the weather like today? Or what time is the so-and-so basketball game? Or what's the score of such and such basketball game? Let me show you quickly how it works. Set a timer for 10 minutes. There you go. And usually it'll say setting timer, got it. You can tap view timers as well if you wanna see if it actually worked or you wanna go in and change it. So I don't use the Google Assistant a ton, but I do love using it to set alarms because I think that's one of the things I use, I do you know, pretty frequently is setting alarms. So it's much faster to just say set alarm for this day, this time than having to find the clock app and go to alarm and set it manually. So that's a really cool thing to use it for. Or if I know I have a work call in an hour, I'll say set an alarm for 50 minutes so my phone will automatically remind me 10 minutes before the call. So that's how you use the Google Assistant. There's so many things you can ask, but I keep it to really those three things, weather, timers, and sports. All right. Our next tip is I wanna show you how to get more apps on your home screen. So right now we have four apps going across and I think five going up. If you hold down the home screen and tap on home screen settings, you can go to home screen grid and you can change it to add more rows or more columns. So four by six, five by five, five by six. Now this will make more room to add more apps or widgets on your home screen. So really cool tweak there. For those of you that like to have a lot of apps on your screen, you're gonna love that. Now, 
for our last tip, I want to show you how to change your lock screen shortcuts. These are the lock screen shortcuts. You have a shortcut to the phone and the camera that you simply put your finger on and drag and it takes you right to that particular app. Well, you can change it. You might say, I don't want the phone here. I don't want the camera here. I know I can just double tap the power button to get to the camera. I'd like to put something more useful there. Well, let me show you how to do that. We're gonna swipe down, tap on the settings wheel. We wanna go to lock screen and then go down to shortcuts and change the left shortcut from the phone to, maybe you say, you know, I'd much rather have my um, alarms there and on the right, I'd much rather have my Gmail app and there it is. In fact, let's change the left to Google Maps because maybe you just drive around a lot. Let's turn off the phone, turn it back on and now we have our Google Maps on the left and our Gmail on the right. All set. All right, this has been our tips and tricks. Hope you guys found this video helpful. We tried to go over a lot to just teach you so many different things you can do on this phone. Do me a favor, leave me a comment in the description section and tell me what your three favorite tips and tricks or hidden features were that you learned in the video. Um, love to hear your feedback. And also make sure you hit that like button, favorite and share the video. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And if there's more you'd like to see or a different type of video, leave it in the comment section down below and we will try to get it. Thanks for watching guys. Take care and as always, have a good one.